All right, so that's roughly where we want to get to in that phase of the stroke because it's gonna make that catch a whole lot easier to do. Hey, Brenton here from Effortless Swimming. This is Feedback Friday, where we look at someone's video, we analyze their stroke, and I look at if I were them or if I were coaching them, what I'd focus on technically to make them swim faster and swim easier. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, hit the subscribe button below, and that way we get notified every time we upload a new video. Now, in today's video, we've got a triathlete, Yevgen, from the UK, and he said that last year his threshold pace was a 140 to 145, and he's brought that down to a 133 per 100. So that is a really good improvement. And he said he's training for Olympic distance triathlons. So having a look here, there's a couple things that I could spot, and you might be able to spot as we look through this video here, that if he makes these changes over the course of the next few months, there will be at least a couple of seconds quicker that he can go uh, when he's racing. Now this 100 is around a, about a 150. So I'm guessing this is quite a, a comfortable, a slower 100 for him if his threshold pace is a, a 133. Now, one of the first things I like to look at is the breathing, because if you get the breathing wrong or you do it incorrectly, then it can lead to a host of other issues. So one of the things that I could notice here is that the exhalation is coming primarily from the mouth, and you'll see it there, all the bubbles are coming from the mouth. Now, I don't mind if a little bit of air escapes through the mouth, but primarily we want that exhalation to come from the nose, because it's a much easier way to breathe, and it just allows you to keep a lower heart rate. So what I'd recommend doing here is switching to exhaling primarily through the nose. And what that should help him do is when he turns his head to breathe, he won't be gasping as much. And I'll I want to show you what I mean by sort of gasping for air. It's not like he's running out of breath. And if you're maintaining a 133 for your, you know, your threshold pace, and you're obviously swimming really well, um, but this is probably going to allow him to just keep a lower heart rate for the same um, basic, basically speed there. So you can see here as he turns to breathe, it's not like he's getting that breath quickly or easily. It's sort of like he's having to do that. And the difference there is that when you exhale from the nose, you can generally just get a, a quicker breath and it's a lot easier to then just sort of bring the head back quicker. Because one of the things that you may notice here when we look from the top is that the breath tends to lag or it tends to be a little bit too long with his head out of the water. So he's just taking a little bit too long to get the breath because he's still breathing out, breathing out, and now he gets the breath, and the head's still out of the water, and it only starts to turn back about now. But you can see that the hand has already entered the water. What we want to try and do is turn the head when essentially that arm is reaching forwards, get the breath, and then as this one's sort of about to come in, we want that head to start to be moving back. So we want to get that breath quicker, but it will probably start with changing the way that he exhales. It's gotta come from the nose. The way I normally help people make that transition is I'll get them to either do like 450s of just normal swimming, focused on that exhalation, or 450s with a pool boy between their legs, and that way it just takes any balance issues, any kick issues out of it, and that way they can focus just on exhaling from the nose. And when swimmers finally make that click, when they transition from mouth to nose exhalation, then for mo you know, most of those swimmers, there's an immediate difference in uh, lower, lower effort and often just much more comfortable in the way that they're swimming. So that would be the first thing because that's gonna help him get his head back in the water. Now, the next thing I would then look to do is adjust the rotation. So rotation is great in freestyle, we want to do it and we wanna do it to the point where we don't lose balance. So often we'll see swimmers who are told to rotate but they're rotating too far because like anything, you can do something too much. And if you over rotate, particularly through the shoulders, then we find that it's very hard to get a good catch. And if you go too far through the shoulders, then you're going to lose a bit of balance and stability in the water. But usually, you know, more importantly, it, it makes it very hard to get a good catch. And you can see here, if we look from the front, one of the things that we tend to, uh, to look for here is how far is someone rotating? So the furthest point of rotation, if we measure that with an angle, you'll see is, all right, we've got that there. The furthest point of rotation is around, say, 60 degrees. What we normally recommend, what I like to recommend is, you know, about 40 degrees is a, is a pretty good spot. A little bit above, a little bit below is fine, but often we see that most elite swimmers tend to rotate to around that 40 degree mark. 
uh, when they're on their furthest point of rotation through the shoulders if we're looking directly front on. Now you'll see here obviously goes to 60 degrees there and then on the breathing strokes he's getting pretty close to that 90 degree mark and that is where I think he tends to lose a bit of balance so 77 degrees and when someone loses balance one of the things that then happens is the legs will often kick quite wide because it sort of kicks out so it's stopping you from going any further so it's that counterbalance out the back and obviously that's going to slow you down it increases the drag quite a bit and you can see you know if we're looking front on when anything's going to kick out that wide and you're going to create that much more surface area that's hitting the oncoming water that's going to slow you down quite a bit so the second thing that i'd recommend you do is reduce his rotation through his upper body a bit bring it back to about 40 degrees down from 77 and 60 degrees bring it back to that 40 degree mark and it is going to do two things for him one it's going to help him get his stroke rate up a bit because if we look through here stroke rate's not super slow or anything but by bringing that stroke rate uh, sorry the um, rotation back a little bit it's going to allow him to sit at a, a faster stroke rate for not much loss of distance per stroke um, but particularly if he's doing triathlon, he's going to be able to hold you know, maybe somewhere in the high 60s, maybe low 70s for that Olympic distance triathlon. Uh, well, yeah, he won't be getting as much distance per stroke, but it's going to be a better thing for him to probably work towards uh, instead of currently where he's at. So it just makes it a lot easier because obviously if you go too far on the side, it's going to take you longer to get back. So that's the first thing it'll help with. But the other thing and probably the more important thing I'd say is it's gonna help him really get a, a, a much more effective catch because if your shoulders are on the side a lot as you're moving through this catch, this part of the stroke, it's very hard to get a high elbow catch position. Now, if you haven't seen our video about the high elbow catch where I break it down and explain it hopefully really clearly, have a look in the description below. I'll put a link to that video and that'll give you a really good understanding of what you wanna achieve there. But essentially, if we look at the catch here, you'll see that all right, so that's the start of the catch. Nice position, fingers below the wrist, wrist below the elbow. Now, as he goes through this next part, because he's still on the side so far, you'll see that he's not really getting a high elbow catch. Now, it's not a bad hold of the water by any means, but he could certainly improve it. So where we'd want to get to is somewhere like that. Minor change, but you can see how much more surface area he's going to have if he can get that higher elbow catch. And yeah, the wrist is a little bit sort of too bent there, but I'd, I'd just focus on adjusting the rotation first. And it's going to mean that when he is in that uh, position on the side, his shoulder will be back this way a bit, which is going to allow him to keep that elbow a little more forwards, so to speak, um, which will help him there. So I'd be interested to see what it looks like, what his catch looks like, when he reduces his rotation, because that's going to change what happens through the, the catch phase of the stroke. And then we'd want to make some adjustments from there but the reason that we sort of follow this order, you know, we look at um, breathing and then um, body position, a few other things, but rotation is obviously one of those. We look at those first because when he changes those, it's probably going to change what happens through his, his catch. So that's why we tend to follow this sort of order or this progression when we're working with someone, whether it be at clinics, at camps or in our online coaching. So that's, um, that's why we look at that, that first. Similar thing on this left-hand side, just sort of dropping the elbow a little bit it's causing the wrist to bend a little bit too much, but I think it's just because he's on the side too far there. Now, when we have a look at that front view, again, you can just sort of see it. So this, this comparison shot here, if you have a look at that, see how far the shoulders are on the side, all right, compared to this shot next to it, all right? So that's roughly where we want to get to in that phase of the stroke because it's gonna make that catch a whole lot easier to do. So it just comes down to reducing the, uh, the rotation. So I'd, I'd, I'd keep it there. I'd keep it really simple to begin with. That might take him a good three or four weeks to make some, some changes there. It may not change the habits yet. You know, sometimes it will take five, six, seven weeks to, to replace the habit and have it feel good and have it feel normal. But I think after three or four weeks of practicing those things, making sure he's getting the right rotation and he's changed his breathing and he's getting the head to come back a bit sooner, then we'd probably look at the next thing, which would probably be the catch, uh, most likely the catch in the pool. Uh, because if you are around that 133 for your threshold pace, where well, you're obviously swimming really well, and there's often some things there uh, with the catch in the pool that are worth improving and worth working on to get it down under that 130, and then eventually under the 125 and so on. So uh, really simple, two things is what I'd start with. 
Now, if you're looking to uh, work with myself or our other coaches, then click the link below. You can join our membership. That's where I uh, coach a lot of swimmers online where they send in their videos and I analyze their stroke. So I can do that. We are now offering a one-time analysis. So if you've got some footage of you swimming, you can send it in to either myself um, or our other coach and we can do an analysis for you and give you some recommended drills and some recommended things exactly like this that'll help you improve your swimming. So click the link below, I'll put that all in the description. Uh, otherwise, like the video, please subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll be back next week with another Feedback Friday and I hope you're enjoying these. Just leave a comment if you are and uh, see you next week.